Hello people, I hope you're okay. Well, this is another one of my videos, but today I decided, now I decided that maybe it's better if I correct the exams or some of the exercise of the exams or instead of correcting if I do it with you so that you know how to do it, right? And um, remember, I prepared a copy for today for all games four and I have it here, of course. So what is it that we're going to do? We are going to work on the exercises together, right? <clears throat> I will stop sharing, sorry, I will share it uh, a little bit uh, bigger. There you go. Okay, paraphrasing. What is it that we have to do in the paraphrasing? We have to locate, yes? We need to locate what is it that we um, have to replace or what is it that we have to use with the phrase that we have here, right? In this case, the phrase that we have here is used to. We know that used to, I explained this today, we know that used to is used to speak about the past, right? For something that was a repetition in the past, right? A habit, we would say, in the past. What is the thing that I need to remember about used to is that after used to, I need to write a verb in the infinitive, right? That is the thing that I need to remember. Uh, in this case, we have Josh, that is a name, a boy, played football as a teenage, teenager, but now he usually plays tennis. What is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is that he had a habit in the past, tenía un hábito en el pasado, that was playing football, and now he doesn't do it anymore. So we need to replace the John play football with using used to, because the other part refers to now, right? Uh, give me a minute. Okay, so here we have to, you know what we have to replace, John played football. So we're going to do it right now. Josh, not John, right? Here we have it. So Josh, Josh used to, and now remember I said the verb in the infinitive, play football as a teenager. Yes, and then we go on with the rest of the sentence. In this case, it would be, but now he usually plays tennis. It plays tennis. It is essential that you put all the information that you have in the first sentence, right? Used to the first one. Second one, I interv the interviewer to Mr. Jones. How long have you been marrying Mr. Jones? And we know that when we have these kind of sentences that has the inverted commas, las comillas, cuando está entre comillas, we know that it is a reported speech sentence. In this case, we are going to report using the verb asked, right? What is it that I need to remember in this case? That I have to complete all the information. So I have to go word by word or phrase by phrase when I report. Ya sabemos que reported speech is to retell something that someone said, right? Es para volver a contar a lo que alguien dijo. So here I have many parts. I have how long, that is the question word. Then we have have, that is the auxiliary. Then we have you, that is the subject. And then we have the rest of the verb phrase that is being married, right? All of this I have to write in my report, right? Todo esto lo tengo que incluir en mi report. But I need to go one tenth back in time. So if in this case we have present perfect, I always have to go back. I have to go to past perfect, right? So I will start. I always have the person, in this case, Miss uh, the interviewer, right? I would say the interviewer, el entrevistador, the interviewer asked 
Yes, and now remember we have to complete all these boxes. Ask uh, how long. La palabrita de pregunta siempre va igual. How long? And remember here we it is not a question anymore. So we are going to write a subject. Como ya no es una pregunta, la inversión que yo hacía en la pregunta ya no existe. Es una oración que parece una pregunta, pero que es una afirmación o un statement, una declaración. The interviewer asked, puedo incluir Mrs. Jones si quisiera, but it's not necessary, asked, how long had, no, sorry, how long Mrs. Jones had been married, right? The interviewer asked, pay attention to this, how long, lo dejé igual, Mrs. Jones, cambié el sujeto, lo puse primero, had been married, past perfect, all right? Now we are going to go to number three. If I have if, I know it is a conditional sentence. I have to pay attention and to think, okay, what type of conditional sentence? ¿Qué tipo de oración condicional? Types one or two? Tipo uno o dos, right? Remember that, that in all the conditional sentences, I have two ideas. In this case, I have, I am a little overweight, tengo sobrepeso, and the other idea is, I eat too much. Es algo que ya me sucede. Yo ya tengo sobrepeso. No es algo que me va a pasar a futuro. Entonces, es muy probable que esto no sea conditional type 1, porque no habla de algo a futuro. Habla de algo que me está pasando en este momento. All right? So I need to use conditional type 2. Necesito usar el 2, que es past and would. Remember, todas las condicionales tienen dos partes. La parte del is. En este caso va a ser en pasado. Y la otra parte que va a ser con would. So I will start with if, right? I would say if. I think that here we have many ideas, right? Uh, I am thinking about not being overweight, right? But I would say if I ate less. Si comiera menos, right? The opposite of this. If I ate less, I wouldn't. Sorry, I wouldn't be overweight. This is one option. Yes, I wouldn't be overweight. That is one option. The other option can be using, um, if I ate, I'm thinking, um, Yes, I eat too much. Vamos a decir si no comiese tanto, right? So, if I didn't eat too much, right? I wouldn't, or I would, ponele que lo querés cambiar y no querés poner a wouldn't be overweight, you can change the idea and you can say, if I didn't eat too much, I would be slim, right? Sería flaco, which is the same idea, right? Okay, so these two possibilities are okay. Sentence number four. I know that many times that I have the word by, I have a passive voice, right? No hay tantas cosas que tengan by. Yes, passive voice is one. Cuando yo mando, o sea, cuando quiero contar quién hizo algo, right? So... Remember, passive voice, again, I will go with the boxes. Voy otra vez con las cajitas, right? A passive voice, I need to remember that. I have a subject, that is the Hollywood producer. I have a verb, that is rented. And I have an, an object, a 16th century castle, right? Yes, you can say a 16th century castle to shoot the film, but it's not necessary. Yes, it's, a, it's to shoot the film, right? What do I do when I, have a, when I have to do passive voice? You remember, first, I put the object. 
after the object, I need to put a verb to be. Que no está acá, lo tengo que agregar. Siempre en voz pasiva tengo que agregar el verb to be. So what do I do? I put here the verb to be. Remember, it has to be in the tense of the active. Tiene que ser en el tiempo de la activa. In this case, past. And then, after the verb to be, I am going to put this verb, but in the past participle version. So I have object. Tengo primero acá, lo voy a poner para letras rojas. Object. After the object, I need Sorry, I need the verb to be. After the verb to be, I need the past participle. And after the past participle, I am going to write by plus lo que antes era el subject. Yes? Y ahora abajo, inmediatamente abajo, voy a escribir la oración. En este caso, quedaría, there you go, I would have a 16th century castle, ese es el object, yes, a 16th century castle, ahora tengo que poner el verb to be, in the past, was, y ahora tengo que poner el past participle, rented. Todos los verbos regulares van siempre igual. Rented by a Hollywood producer. To shoot the film. Yes, by a Hollywood producer to shoot the film. Lo vamos a poner así para que no me eh, afecte la autora. All right. So this is how we do it. Pero ¿qué es lo que más me sirve de acá? La estructura. Object, verb to be, en cualquier, en el tiempo que lo necesite, estaba la oración. Past participle, by, y el sujeto que es el que lo realiza. All right? Give me a minute. Very good. We go on now. Otra vez tenemos reported speech. ¿Cómo sé que tengo reported speech? Asked. Told, said. Así sé que tengo reported speech. In this case, it is told, right? El mecanismo va a ser siempre el mismo. Tengo que irme a un tiempo anterior, right? In this case, Mary said to me, Mary told me exactly the same. I will just do it. Mary told me, right? Y ahora empiezo casillero por casillero. Palabrita por palabrita. Mary told me she, en lugar de la I, right? She had bought a pair of shoes. All right? Very simple. Very, very simple. Right? Mary told me she had bought a pair of shoes. Perfect. Right? Me acuerdo que tengo que hacer el pasaje y ponerlo un tiempo atrás. Otra vez conditional, right? If I have if, I have a conditional sentence, right? In this case, if conditional type one. ¿Cómo lo sé? Porque estoy pensando en algo que puede pasar en el futuro, que es real. Dice, we shouldn't play the music too loud. The neighbors will wake up. O sea, si yo pongo la música fuerte, se van a despertar. Right? Very, very simple. Conditional type one que va con present and will, present and future. So I will start with, will start with this, right, if. Que, ¿Cuál es la condición? Que yo ponga la música alta. So if we play uh, the music too loud, ahora viene la parte del futuro, it's the same, the neighbors, will wake up. Yes? Easy. Conditional teníamos antes el 2 y acá tenemos el 1. Conditional type 1. Okay, well, the sentence number 7 is very similar to conditional type 1. 
we have a lot of phrases in English that are phrase, phrases that show future. Yes, future phrases we can tell, right? As soon as, when, sometimes, uh, in case, all these phrases join together two ideas. Juntan dos ideas, todas estas frasecitas, ¿sí? When, eh, as soon as, um, in case. En todas yo voy a tener una parte en present simple and the other part in future with will, ¿sí? La, ambas ideas suceden de hecho en el futuro, pero la que está cerca de la frasecita de as soon as, in case, qué sé yo, when, Those sentences are going to be in the present. Yeah, so we always say, for example, when he comes, I will tell him. I will say when. As soon as he arrives, I will talk to him. Uh, in case. Ah, ahora, in case, generalmente es al revés, o, o la frase podría ir al revés. For example, um, I will take an umbrella in case it rains. La frasecita que está después del in case va a ir en presente. Ok, con esta va lo mismo. As soon as eh, joins together. So, ¿qué va a pasar tan pronto como? Right? Very good. As soon as I get home. I will call you, right? As soon as I get home, yes, I'm planning to get home at eight, I will call you then. So as soon as I get home, I will call you. Very good. The last one is very easy, right? Here you have, what is the information that you have with must? The information that you have with must, with must in this case is that you are certain about something. Que estás seguro de algo es ese más, right? So uh, you are going to say, Jenny must be in her office. The rest is the same. I have heard her speaking on the phone. No problem, right? Very good. Siempre que yo tenga un modal verb, yes? Siempre que yo tenga un modal verb, que tenga, for example, should, can't, can, must, might, might, may, will, would. Siempre que yo use un modal verb, yo tengo que recordar que lo que va después es un verbo en infinitivo. ¿Yes? It's a verb in the infinitive. No hay otra opción. No hay una construcción en inglés que tenga un verbo modal y que tenga otra cosa después. No hay ing, no hay eh, ed, no hay s. Es el verbo en infinitivo. No other thing. All right? Very good. Well, this is the end of this video.